What's shaking, guys? My name is Luke Dancy. It is Wednesday. It is New Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. I don't know where you guys are out there in the world, but I am here in Las Vegas. It's, good. it's really, really good to have all of you with me today, and uh, it's going to be a fun day. We have a special guest today. His name is Mr. Ryan Jones. He is a card collector and enthusiast from Chicago. He's been known online um, for his deck reviews. He's quite the guy. He's got good reputation for all that good stuff, and we are here to tell you all about a brand new deck of cards that's coming out. And you know what, this is also going to give me a good chance to learn more about the world of card collecting because I got totally honest with you, I don't know a whole lot about it and uh, this is a guy that knows a whole lot about it and can share that with me and with the rest of you guys. So welcome my friends, kick back and relax tonight or this afternoon wherever you are out there. Uh, this is going to be a good time. Uh, I see a lot of my friends already out there over on our YouTube channel and Facebook page. We'll be jumping over to you guys in just a few minutes. Uh, but up first I do want to uh, show you exactly what we're going to be talking about today. This is the Mechanic uh, Metallic Limited Edition set. We're also going to give you guys a chance to win a couple of the decks, one of the decks from the set, the Shiners. Uh, these are really, really cool, and I'm excited to chat with our guests today. So uh, we are going to talk about uh, that stuff coming up here in just a minute. So I'm going to give you a look at the trailer if you haven't seen this yet. i got to tell you something. The animation on this deck, if you've never seen it, this is really, really cool stuff. Um, and there's a lot of other nice little features with this deck. So um, here we go. Have a look at this deck uh, or decks, I should say, from this set. And uh, we'll be back in just a minute to chat with Ryan Jones. All right, here we go. Friends, as you can see, I am joined by Mr. Ryan Jones. He's coming at us from Chicago, the Windy City. What is going on, Ryan? Hello, Luke. Thanks for having me on today. Really it, excited to be here to get to talk decks with you guys. Yes, sir. You are uh, quite well known for your uh, card collecting skills, I guess you could call it, and your reviews of decks. You know, people have really come to respect your opinion. Uh, and your input when it comes to different uh, decks of cards, and so I'm excited to have you with us today. So thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm excited to be here. Um, I've been collecting for quite a few years now, and cool. really have worked my way into having opportunities to share my voice and kind of share a bit of the collecting world. Uh, there's a strong presence of magic and cardistry on the social media services, so I like to bring a little bit of emphasis towards the collecting side of things. Um, Sweet. Most people out there that are cardist or magic have a little collection of themselves. And then there's some people that 
don't participate in either of those activities and just collect solely for the art, for the designers, for the themes, the brands. There's all different avenues and genres of the collecting world. Absolutely, so. dude. And I wanted to also ask you, um, you know, or actually I want to get this information from you because you did mention social media is a very popular thing these days. Some people might only know you from your Instagram username or profile name. Uh, I'm not saying that they all don't know who you are, but what, what name do you go by on, on Instagram? Because you have quite a following on there. On Instagram, I go by 56 Sealed, and that's obviously an homage to my collector side. Um, <laughs> I used to keep all my decks sealed. Um, <laughs> however, over the years, I've begun to open a lot more, use them, um, kind of try to quantify them in, in terms that are easy to um, express to other people stiffness glide slickness of the handling you know things like that that people can compare and get an idea if that's the right deck for them or if that's something that strikes their interest i so. love it i love it and what is the deck or i guess decks uh what are the decks that we're going to be talking about today in particular my friend well we got two decks today it's from a deck set and these are the mechanic industries they're the third edition in a series of the mechanic industries. And these ones are going to the name of Shiner and Glimmer. And they're both feature heavily foiled tuck boxes with deep embossing, really catches the light, beautiful shelf pieces if that's how they stay. Um, the card, the tuck box on the back demonstrates exactly what you'll see inside with the cards just rendered in foil, really beautiful tuck boxes. And that's just where it starts. Um, if you do get a chance to break the seal, and I highly encourage it, you'll notice that the foil continues over and into and throughout the whole entire tuck case. That's sexy, dude. Really nice detail. It's not just there for looks either. It's also functional. Um, if you guys are familiar with the concept of a shiner, it's a reflective piece of material some gamblers or shifty gamblers would keep inside the palm of their hand, on the table, somewhere in, in play where they could slide the card over and actually get a glimpse through the mirror effect. Um, these offer the perfect reflection. If you're able to pass a card over them, you can clearly see what card you have in your hand. Um, Love and even if you don't want to keep the whole box, you can always cut out a little corner and conceal it right in the palm of your hand. No one will see it. <laughs> Love it, dude. Yeah, that's the one thing I think people um, definitely miss is that detail that's inside the talk as well because they think, oh, it's just, you know, you got a nice talk, uh, the cards, but then you look at the actual talk itself and there's, there's a lot of thought, a lot of detail put in that for sure. Yeah, and I will say this. Um, for the collector's market, a lot of companies have gone with um, increasing the quality and the details on their packaging. They understand that um, people have been collecting cards for hundreds of years and holding on to them in sealed condition, bringing them back and you know showing them off in auctions and some very high-end decks of cards that are sought after around the world from years and years and years ago. Um, so in, in hopes, uh, or I guess in in um, respect to collectors, you could definitely tell there's a trend towards producing more detailed and more feature filled boxes. And interior printing is a really nice upgrade. You don't get just the plain white tuck inside. You get a nice smooth surface that looks good inside out. It's, you know, it's the whole package really, like you said, it, it touches on every detail. doesn't just leave off the unknown parts. Right on. Well, you know, we're talking about a specific deck, and we are going to get into all the details with this. And if you guys have questions, we are watching our YouTube feed uh, and also over on Facebook, too. I'll be bringing in your questions here in just a few minutes, guys. Um, while we get your questions ready and, and we get ready to talk more about this, I'd love to know from you, Ryan, and we'll keep it quick because I know we're here to talk about the deck, but you're a card collector. You're known for this. And can you give me an idea of how you got into that what made you want to do that and and what's made you want to continue to do it because it is something that um you take very serious and uh i think a lot of people know that so yeah i started off just collecting a few decks here and there five dollar decks trying to find ones that i like the art for um i was less interested in 
the quote unquote quality or usability of the cards. I just like the art and I started accumulating the cards. Um, soon I started wondering the backstories of it and a lot of people kept their company names and information on the bottom of the tuck case. So shamelessly, I sent out emails, messages, got on Instagram, got on social media and started finding these people and asking them, I like the deck, can you tell me some more details? And that soon became an obsession where I started trying to find as much as I could out about every deck I had. Um, I caught the eye of Hocus Pocus with my post on Instagram and they kind of gave me a voice and said, will you review decks for us and put uh, your videos and pictures and stuff up on their site? And that kind of really lit a spark in me. And since then, I have uh, think I've gotten up to about 3,500 decks. Not all of them unique, but wow. most of them I have two of. But I'm sitting somewhere right around 3,500 now. Dude, that is sick. Yeah, it's a lot of fun looking through them. I'll tell you that much. You, you sometimes will find a deck you've seen two or th you haven't seen for you know two or three years, and you're like, oh, I miss it. And you remember the whole backstory, who gave it to you, how you found it, all that <laughs> good stuff. Now, I'd love to know something too of how long this obsession has been going on because uh, you mentioned you started doing this, but you didn't tell us how long you've been doing it. Uh, that's something I'm curious about. So I've really only been seriously collecting for two years now. Okay. Um, I've been doing reviews with Hocus Pocus for a little over a year, um, a year and three months, I think. And um, I've really, really started collecting about two years ago. Prior to that, I just had a few decks. But even back to my childhood, I always had a deck of playing cards around at my grandma's house, my parents' house, my uncle showing me magic tricks. So they've kind of always been a part of my life, whether I appreciated them to the extent I do now or not, but they've always been there. But really started collecting and displaying and putting them on my shelf for about two solid years now. And you said your collection is over 3,000 decks it's getting there i'm gonna have to do a serious inventory count and and post some statistics on instagram here soon wow i think at some point um i'd love to get uh you to grab a camera and send me a video of you showing off this amazing collection that you have because i think people would love to see that because that's a lot of cards I certainly will. And the way I lay it out, I try to expose a little bit of each box I have. So panning through, you can catch some glimpses and some ideas about what's really in there, even the far back ones. All right. Sounds good, man. Well, let's get back to the Mechanic Metallic set because I want people to know these are available in two ways. That's something before we get into a lot of the detail with the, the finish and all that type of stuff. Um, and I'll let you take over, Ryan, because you've done a lot of homework on this, just like you do with every deck, because you're a huge collector. Um, these come not just as the set, which we do recommend the set because the Glimmer deck, which, do uh, you mind holding that one up for us? That is the more, kind of like the gold uh, looking of the decks. This one's only available as part of the set, isn't that right? Yes. If you want the Glimmer deck, you got to get them as the deck set. You can get the Shiner deck solo by itself. Mm -hmm. But in order to get the Glimmer deck, you got to buy them as a package set. And there were only, if I'm not mistaken, only uh, 2,500 of the um, Glimmer decks made. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so there's only going to be 2,500 of the sets total for sale. And that's across every venue out there. So they're not, you know, you're not going to find 2,500 in one spot. They're going to get swooped up pretty quick. So. Yeah. I suggest you find your favorite Murphy's retailer, check out Hocus Pocus, they'll have them, and um, pick up the deck set. And if you're like me and like to keep stuff sealed and don't want to grab an extra, pick up an extra Shimmer deck, um, by its, a Shiner deck by itself, and that way you can open it up and get a good idea and keep these two on the shelf sealed. Take it. I like that. You just came up with his next edition of the deck called the Shimmer. <laughs> really? It's a combination of the two. I like a shimmer deck. I think that would work, right? <laughs> a holographic foil. There you go. Well, I don't know. Um, you did mention one of those decks, which I'm a big fan of. I think this is such a clever thing. Uh, the Shiner deck itself. Um, can you give us a peek inside the tuck on that? Because, guys, this really does act as a legit Shiner. Um, this is really, really cool. You can actually use it as a Shiner. So when you pass cards over it, you can get a nice reflection of what the card is. Um, it usually works better when you're holding the deck. There, you can see the Ace of Spades there. Yeah, there you go. So if you have the box on the table, guys, think about this. With the, the tuck open, 
when you deal cards over the box, over the tuck there, you can get a nice look at what the cards are. So this acts as a um, peak device, uh, as well as the, um, is just looking really cool. <laughs> yeah, and there's some really, uh, really cool features to this deck too. Even if you want to, if, if you're afraid the Shiner uh, component of it might be too conspicuous, someone might notice it, this deck is fully marked. And it's not just marked for suit, but it's marked for value as well. It's got everything. It's a lot easier to read. And um, you can actually tell with a little bit of practice what cards people are picking, selecting. You don't have to know which cards you're forcing. You could give them a random choice and know exactly what the outcome is going to be at step one. It's a very clever way of uh, incorporating a marking system, almost hidden in plain sight. That's, um, that's actually. Is that okay to mention how they do that, Luke? Yeah, yeah you know, I was actually going to ask you something when it comes to the marking system because I've had some people ask, and I don't have the deck myself, so I don't know how to answer this, but the marking system that's included in the set – how was it taught? Because I've had some people tell me, Luke, I'm not sure how to learn it or where is it taught. Where, you know, is there something with it that teaches you that, or how do you figure out how to yes. learn that system? So there's a, a website and a PDF file that you'll get that that has some very clear, easy to understand information on it. It's in it's not in video form. It's in written form. It's got nice pictures and markings on it, and it's it's really simple to catch the concept of it. There's not a lot of, you don't have to memorize a lot of things. You don't have to look for certain positions and ang angles. It's just literally remembering kind of notches on a, on a dial of a clock. Um, and if you can imagine 13 cards in each suit. So this, these cogs in the main gear, which are the little teeth on the gear, they'll rotate around and their orientation will give you an indication of exactly what card that is. So yeah, yeah. I can, I'll try to demonstrate here quickly with for the camera, but there is an animation effect to it. That's so cool, dude. <laughs> okay, so if you, if you use that animation effect, you can kind of tell that each one of the cards is different from the card before it. And that's where you can get the ace through king and kind of tell according to where these cog uh, gear teeth are lined up is going to be exactly what card it is. It seems a little bit more harder to describe than it is to actually read. So with a little bit of practice, you'll see and be able to look at it quickly and be like ace, eight, king. And then there's an also an indicator for the suit, so you'll know right off the bat, ace of hearts, king of diamonds, whatever it is. You know. Sweet. Love it, dude. Let me mention a few other things about this one, because this is an edition that might look familiar to people. There was a V1 edition that first came out mm -hmm. with black and gray inks, and it also had the chain order that rotated with an animation. Okay. Um, so that was the V1, came out a, 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 quite a few years ago, and quickly sold out, and once it sold out, Everyone really wanted to get them, and one of the only ways you could find them was buying the deck, the deck guard, or the car, the um, the deck's case that came with it in metal, or it came with a, um, a few had uh, coins, ignition coins, and grinder coin sets with them. So they became V1s even to this day. If you try to find them, they're very hard to locate. They have a slightly different uh, tuck, and they only mark the value of the card. They don't have the suit indicated on the back of the marking system. Then they came out, Mechanic Industries came out with a second edition, and they added, they cleaned up the back design a little bit, they changed a few details on the tuck, and they added a suit and a value marking system on it, so you knew exactly what card it was. Not just what suit, what value it was, but what the actual value and suit was. Both of those, um, I'm sorry, V2 was is still available right now. You can still find them here and there. Uh, they're getting a little bit harder to find. Uh, but both of those are printed on the B stock with Magic Finish. And that's kind of like the magician's uh, old go-to for card stock. Everyone used to love B stock, love Magic Finish. Uh, <laughs> it has a thicker card stock to it. They last longer. The edges are more durable than your traditional bicycle stock. Um, however... As with all trends, things continually change. Everyone's kind of getting back on the bicycle stock again. Yeah. 
they found a way to crush it, make it a little bit thinner. It's got just as much snap and flex, but it doesn't have the weight and the heft that the B cards had. So these, the V3s, they're going to look, the, the Shiner deck is going to look the closest to the V1s and V2s in color, but these actually utilize metallic ink. So this back, I'm trying to catch a little bit in the sun, but mm. this back just reflects beautifully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. And with, with these white details and black, it really, those kind of anchor the shadows in, and then the metallic ink just sparkles and reflects according to the angle. So it offers a really nice, uh, like a really classy and really flashy appeal to it without being just in your face and you know, unbalanced. The black and the white really hold the metallic inks in place. So, uh, uh, the, the stock on this, do you like, I guess, what is the actual finish called? That's something that I get confused on because there's so many different styles of printing these days in different places. Can you kind of go into the detail? And I know a lot of the guys out there, whether collectors or not, always want to know what's the finish on the deck. Can you kind of go specific on those details for us? So there is a lot of speculation and a lot of kind of uh, unclear answers about what the difference in the finishes are. All of them are going to be quote unquote air cushion because of the design that they have with the dimples inside. Um, but the, the actual makeup, the dry times and the process they use will, can result in different types of air cushion finish. There is also a cambric finish which does not have the dimples and that would never be called air cushion. Mm -hmm. But under the air cushion name, one of the more popular ones is the magic finish. And I believe it's a difference in the actual procedure, maybe a difference in the chemical, but the magic finish is known to be one of the most durable. Um, okay. As far as handling, getting greasy hands, passing the deck around, they'll last you a lot longer. They won't get the, the really dark edges. They won't get the blurry uh, color stains on the top and yellowish edges. The magic finish kind of holds up a little bit longer. They are paper. You know, they, they will eventually show their age over time, but the magic finish actually, uh, you know, will give you, a, extend the life of the deck a little bit longer for you. Cool. All right. Uh, we've got some questions and comments coming in. Uh, this one comes in over on YouTube. Uh, Harshit says, if you encourage breaking a deck seal, you are not the real 56 seal. Just saying. <laughs> Who said that? Uh, his name is Harshit Goel. I'm not sure if I pronounced that Oh, right. my buddy from India. He know I know him. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously I'm talking to the wrong guy today. I think that's what I'm getting. <laughs> um, oh, they, everyone gives me a hard time because I used to promote... You know, the beauty of the deck is on the outside. You don't have to always go inside and tear up the cards. I want to pass these down to my kids and their kids in a sealed condition. <laughs> and now they all see me opening up all my decks, playing with them. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the guy. You are yeah. not the guy. Um, my alter ego. There is something else that's been mentioned over here on Facebook. And I want to say hello to our Facebook friends, too. Um... Uh, Munwar, good to see you, Munwar. Uh, he says, I have mechanics deck and the coin. I do a routine with it. It's really nice. Can you tell me, uh, I know the answer to this, but can you tell the guys uh, in the trailer that we saw, uh, there is a coin that's used, um, the grifters, I think, no, not the grifters. Those are the ones we Grinder. produce. The, the grinders, that's right. Um, and basically, there's a couple things in their trailer where the coin's popping off the card and things like that. Um, the coin doesn't come with the set. Isn't that right? That's correct. Um, you can still find those coins. Uh, there's a trick called ignition from Mechanic Industries, and it includes a keychain with two grinder coins and a few uh, other components to it. And then there's also a, a grinder coin set you can get just individually if you could still find those. So they're out there. And I'll tell you, it's it looks like the coins look like this in in raised 3D detail. They've got a beautiful ridge pattern. Um, they, I, I believe the term is called chatter, but they've been designed to not have as much chatter, and that's when the coins click in your hand and cause noise. Uh, if you're working with multiple coins or concealing coins in your hand, you always want something that's designed with the least amount of uh, bell ringing, dinging, jingling noise. So. They, they took, mechanics I know took the extra step and mentioned that those coins were designed uh, 
purely for magic use and with all the details they could put in there to enhance your um, displays, enhance your uh, demonstrations. I think they call that talking, right? The coins talk. I think that's talk. the Talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I call it Saturn. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> talking. The yeah. coin guys, they'll set you straight. <laughs> yes, uh, um, they should. <laughs> the uh, And the coins that are used in the trailer in the um, that match the Joker, because the, the deck does come with some quote unquote gaffes, right? With the Jokers. Yes. It's there's a, a Joker that's missing the coin. Right. And then there's the Jokers that have the coin on them. Mm-hmm. And there's two of them with the coin. So if you were to ever have to show a full deck, you don't have to worry about exposing one Joker in advance without a coin on it. The coin and this is a question I got asked before. I keep looking at questions too. Uh, the coin size from the Joker, because the uh, grinder coins that are out there, you can either get them as uh, a half dollar or dollar size. I'm assuming it's the half dollar size that matches the coin on the card, right? So if you pop it off, it looks the same size, right? Yes, yes. Cool. But you'd be surprised. Right. I don't. Uh, I don't think that most of the spectators are as meticulous about details as we are unless they're clearly obvious but i've seen this done with i believe the ignition coin is the full dollar size and i've seen this done with the ignition um and it's the the magic is the coin coming off of the card Mm -hmm. um little people go back and i'm sorry a few people would go back and actually think now was that the right size you know (laughs) yeah but I will say, for those people that are very meticulous about detail, yeah, that's taken into consideration. That this will match the half dollar size. Cool. All right. Now, I mean, ma- you know, magicians always want to know all, every little detail, and that's okay. That's but, good. Uh, you know, I always want to make sure I try to get to uh, as many of the, the detailed questions as possible. And you know what, too? Uh, something else I want to do for the guys today, I don't think you even knew this. We're going to give the guys a chance to win a deck of shiners. And we're not going to give away the glimmers because you have to get the set, but yep. um, we're going to give the guys a chance to win uh, a shiner deck on the house. I've been doing this recently. I gave away a deck over on our Instagram feed. You guys need to make sure you're keeping up with us over there at Murphy's Magic. Uh, and also, we did a contest uh, a couple weekends ago on our Facebook page. So here's what I'm going to do, guys. Uh, for our friends watching on Facebook, here's what you can do to enter, and I'll pick a winner on next week's show. Um, and if you wouldn't mind holding up the Shiner deck for me so we can tell the guys what they're going to have a chance to win. So the Shiner deck, there it is. This is the one with the tuck that actually has the Shiner function in it. Um, so when you pass the cards over, you can see them. Uh, all you guys need to do, if you want to win these, is to tag a friend. This is on Facebook. Uh, in a post, tag a friend and get them to uh, also like this post. So you need to like this post over on Facebook, whether you're watching the live video or the on-demand. Like the post and tag a friend. Uh, that way we will uh, have a way to keep up with everybody um, over on Facebook. Now, it's a little bit different over on YouTube because you guys can't do all the same things and your comments you're posting right now, uh, they can't be saved. Uh, YouTube's weird like that. So what I want you YouTube friends to do is over the next week, uh, post a comment in the section below this video telling me why you should win this deck and what you should do with it. You can pick either one, why you should win it or what you want to do with the deck. Um, be as creative as you want. As I always tell you, be funny or be serious. But if you want to win this deck, uh, tell me... More specifically, what you would do with it. Uh, be creative. It is a shiner tuck. So you can do a lot of really cool creative things with it when it comes to peeking and getting information. Um, so good luck to my friends over on Facebook. Again, make sure to like this post and to tag a friend. Uh, and also to our friends on YouTube, just post feedback about why you should win. And I'll keep you guys a couple more reminders as the show goes on. But that's it. We'll pick a winner next week, for both YouTube and Facebook. And uh, good luck to everybody. I also do want to give a shout out. I've uh, pulled this up a couple times here. And I want to make sure that I do it now too. Uh, we do have our feature dealer for today's show. And that is our friends uh, over at Hocus Pocus. If you want to check them out, that is hocus-pocus.com. Uh, they've got the limited edition set over there available to you guys. We'll get it out to you right away. And uh, we are proud to have them as our feature dealer for today's show. And uh, it's good to see them hanging out. I believe I saw them over on our uh, YouTube feed just a moment ago. It's good to see those guys joining us today. All right. So, uh, Ryan, uh, we have talked a little bit about the quality of the cards. talked about the tuck. talked about the uh, finish on the decks. Uh, And the marking system. I I did want to clarify something with the marking system. Um, How do people get access to that information 
once they buy the deck? Is there like a link that's provided on the box, on the tuck? Is there something on the inside? Like, where do they get the information about the marking system that is included with the deck? So there is a card that's included that ha that lists a website, and if you follow the links on the website, you'll be able to get to that PDF file. Perfect. That is something that I have uh, not been aware of, but I'm glad to know it now because that's important. <laughs> you know, you get a deck and you go, yeah. well, it's marked, but I don't know how to read it. So, yeah, all right. <laughs> and and it seems it, it does take a, a, a small amount of knowledge and the rest is intuition. So once you know where the starting point is, you'll easily be able to tell where all the cards are. You don't have to memorize what each individual one is in some random location. It's very systematic. It's 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 useful and beneficial. I, I like it. There's few marking systems out there that are kind of obvious, and there's a few that are so hard you'd have to stare at them forever. This is, you know, right down the middle. It's easy to read. It's useful, but no one's going to pick it up unless you show them the animation aspect of it. And that's definitely one of my favorite things about this deck is when you riff load and you see the animation going oh, yeah. those cocks turning and the gears going that's, that's and let me show you the gold one because this one stands out really well in the animation there you go you Can really we... get that turning effect um i will say that one of the benefits of, of a deck like this is it's for all age levels and for all different activities. If you um, if you just like shuffling cards and playing pokers, poker and games with your buddies, show them the cool animation on it, and you know, tell them, hey, look at this. The the designer of this comes from an, a um, a design and animation background, and he noticed that you know these are just like animation tiles in a flip book. So he really kind of captured that uh, theme and that um, functionality of the animation and brought it to the deck. If you want to use it as part of your routine, there is a guy, uh, a video, I believe it's one of the links is in the, um, is in the information for this on their website. Uh, a gentleman who uses the animation aspect of it to show people the deck is working to find their card. That's very clever. <laughs> it's, it's useful. People like to be entertained in that aspect. And then if you don't want anybody to know, if you're not riffling through this deck, they're not going to be able to see the animation. It is, I would beg anybody to be able to tell the difference between two cards that doesn't know that there's yeah. a marking system on them. So, well said. very inconspicuous. So you can kind of, it's a multi-level. If you want to use it for the fun of showing off the animation, you want to incorporate that into a trick, or you want to keep it secret for yourself and just be able to read cards, you can kind of hit on all those levels with one deck. Now, I did want to ask you something about the animation. Uh, again, I don't have the decks uh, myself, so this might be a very obvious question. Do the cards have to be in new deck order or a certain order for the animation to happen because of the way that the gears are going and everything? Or can it just be shuffle deck and you go through and you can get the animation? What's the, what's the, um, the deck? Does it have to be set up to get that? So if you want a complete, even, really clear to see rotation, you put it in ace through king, mm -hmm. any suits, because each of the 13 cards creates one complete rotation of the wheels and one rotation or a section of rotation of the chain along the outside. So even if you just have 13 cards, you can demonstrate the full rotation. Now, the fun part is if you mess around with the order, you can create skips, you can create like stutters in the gears. It's really fun. Cool. Um, even just for your own entertainment, switch them up and put them in weird order and see how the chain will start to go and then come back and then go again and you can control the speed. <laughs> um, you cool. almost feel like, you know, like a mad scientist in there controlling the gears and chains themselves. So you can come up with some really cool results by mixing the order. But ace through king any of the suits in that in any order will show you a complete rotation four times through the whole deck. Very cool. I'm going to test you right now. Uh, this is a deck that we, uh, we do stock. Murphy stocks a lot of playing cards and products, but I'm just going to hold up this part of the... I'm going to test you right now. Uh, actually, you can't see me, so never mind. I was, going to, I was going to show you the part of the tuck that I'm holding and see if you could guess it, but, but forget it. We'll try that another Give time. me a hint, and I bet you I can guess it. Give me one design clue on it. It... it it is a, um, it is a, uh, I'm going to show the guys at home. This is a blue and kind of like a cardboard kind of color tuck. 
Fox Targets by Lance Miller. Was that it? Nope. Oh, light blue. Not 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 light blue. Just blue with what it's like a blue with kind of like a cardboard feel and look of the actual tuck. Come on, man. Come on, Ryan. Oh, blue and not glossy, not embossed, not foil. We, not it red. feels very cardboardish in a cool way. I, I'm, I'm stuck on Fox Targets. No. A great deck. Um, I'm going to see if there's any other hints here. I don't want to stick on this. It's a cambric finish. Um, Ooh, would that be uh, Ace, Ful Ace Fulton's? Wah, wah, wah. Nope. <sighs> these are produced, these are a new updated version of an old classic. Aladdin's. Uh, Almost. It does begin with an A. You're getting there. Hmm. I am stuck. Talking about some aviators flying your way. Oh! This is the Heritage Edition. I like these guys. So, oh, I love that deck. Yeah. Anyway, back to Mechanic Metallics. <laughs> um, yes. And by the way, for those of you just joining us, uh, this is Ryan Jones. He is a card collector and enthusiast from Chicago. Uh, he posts different deck reviews. Uh, have you done those in a while? I don't, I don't, you know, haven't seen too much of your stuff lately, so I'm trying to well, keep up with what's going on. I, I, sorry if I'm going to hog the camera for a minute, but for the past uh, four months, I've been moving all around Chicago. I've lived in three different places in four months. Everything of mine has been put in storage four months ago, and I have just delivered everything from storage back to my permanent house that I, I signed a lease. I'm not moving, so okay. I'm going to be there. I'm going to uh, completely open my collection back up. I'll do a couple live videos where I unbox them, and then I'm going to get right back in the swing of things, doing reviews. Cool. A any opportunity I have to share my voice, I'm going to be back. Very cool. Dig it, man. Sounds good. Uh, also want to let you guys know, we had a question popping up over here on the old YouTube. want to bring in you guys again. Uh, Larry Isley said, uh, you sold me, but I can't figure out who was actually selling the set. Um, Larry, the set is actually available from uh, Magic Dealers uh, all around the world, uh, but we do have a featured dealer today um, that I want to make sure to tell you about. Uh, if you are looking to get this deck set today, check out our friends at Hocus Pocus, hocus-pocus.com. They got this in stock, ready to ship out wherever you are out there in the world. That's a good group of guys over there. We like Max and the team, and uh, I think, Ryan, you've actually done some deck reviews for them, uh, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, I... 43 deck reviews I think I've done for Hocus Pocus. So are you going to do a special review for the 52nd review? Because, I mean, come on. Or 56. Whatever. 56. I was going to say 52. you got to add my jokers and ad cards because I collect them and use them all. Nothing's leaving these. Um, yes, I probably will. I'll prob I'm, I'm going to try to make this year more involved for the people that regularly participate. I, I have a solid core group of people that constantly watch my videos support me through my live streams, answer, qu ask questions um, when the live streams are up. And those type, I want to kind of find a way to reward those people in that group and to encourage more people to join. So I'm going to try to do more giveaways. I'm going to work with Hocus Pocus to bring you guys quicker reviews, faster reviews, maybe in different formats. And any opportunities, anytime Murphy's comes knocking, I'll make sure I provide the time and the space to, you know, share my knowledge with Murphy's um, community that they've collected together. So whatever I can do to share my voice, I'm going to be back really big in 2017. All right. Sounds good, man. And uh, we got some other friends out here I see popping up. I see Ace Cunnings over on Facebook. Good to see you, Ace. Uh, Ellis, good to see you, Ellis. Bob Miller, hello, hello. Mark Atkinson, hello. Nice to see you, James Beck, hello. Um, Ace says, I love this deck look. It would be awesome to get one in my hand. Don't forget, guys, you can get a free deck of the Shiners, not the set. You can't just get the set. Um, Ryan's holding those up right there. This is the tuck on the inside that has the, uh, well, the Shiner functionality. It's pretty awesome. You can see it right there. You can actually glimpse cards and peek them as you're dealing. Uh, Facebook friends, all you need to do is to give a like on this video, whether you're watching live or on demand, and tag a friend. Tag a magician friend um, that you think would be interested in this deck too, and we will pick a um, winner on next week's show. YouTube friends, a little bit different. Functionality is different than Facebook. All you need to do is post a comment over the next week after this goes up as an on-demand telling us why you should win or what you would do with this deck. This is the Shiner deck, so a lot of fun stuff you can do with it. Be a series or as funny as you like. And again, YouTube friends will pick a winner next week. So one deck for Facebook, one deck for YouTube. Winners everywhere. Dig it. All right. 
So uh, that is some fun stuff going on um, with us. We always like to try to hook you guys up with the good stuff. Uh, Andrew Nagy has good questions. Jump back over to the uh, YouTube real quick. Um, Andrew wants to know, what's the first deck in your collection? So Ryan, what's the first deck in your deck collection? <laughs> well, it was a green leaf back bicycle that I bought from a game store. Um, but the first deck that I bought because I was excited about getting cards was the Bicycle Sideshow Freaks. It's a yellow and brown printed deck with cartoonish background. And the courts are all characters from the old vintage sideshows like Lobster Boy and the Bearded Woman. I love the art on the deck. And that just when I saw that, I said, there's 52 panels of artwork that are in a box. If I were to go buy 52 prints of anything, I'd be spending way more than six to eight dollars for a box, you know. So mm -hmm. I was like, they're they're distributing art in one of the cheapest, most affordable formats. This is for me. I've always loved art, so that's really what kicked it off. Was the bicycle sideshow freaks? All right, very good, very good. What's your? Uh, is this the deck you're holding now? Is this the most recent deck that you've gotten your hands on? It actually is. Um, Again, since I've been out for three months, I've had all my mail forwarded to different areas and yeah. everything's just been stayed in boxes. Uh, when when I got this sent over to me, I immediately tore into it. Um, the boxes have some wear and tear already. They've been work. I've been working with these for about uh, a little little uh, little under a week. Um, really exploring the animation, the marking system. You know, going through and just spending some time with them. I love the way they handle. I love the 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 bicycle lightness to them. They don't have that stiff B feel that is for some people, but I enjoy the more flex to them. Yeah. And um, they're just it's they're well done. I, I mean, the, the design it fills the background. There's no empty weird spaces, and it's not too cluttered. It's not busy. It's just it it's well done. Well, it's well done, and I think that comes from small refinements over three editions. The animation aspect of it, as a collector, um, do you like it? Like, I know from a novelty standpoint, it's pretty cool, but like as a collector, do you look at it, as a serious collector, which is what you are, do you look at it as a novelty, or do you, or do you look at it as something that's actually like, it's a nice kind of change of pace when it comes to uh, you know, a deck of cards? Because there's so many decks now. Um, it's, it's not often when one really stands out, but this one really seems to do that because of the animation aspect and some other nice features, too. I will tell you that the draw of the V1, um, there was 25,000 printed of the V1, and they're hard to find. Yeah, that's true. People really enjoy the uniqueness of the animation. Um, one of my first Instagram videos I posted, videos, um, back when they had the 15-second time limit, I did a, a flip book of the animation on mechanics, and that was like my first viral Instagram video. I had people, I think I had more views on it than I had people that were following me. And I was like, how is this possible? Um, it really caught people's eyes. There are not many animated cards out there. And the mm -hmm. ones that are animated are usually animated for a trick. Um, so there's a few um, effects by, say, Paul Harrison that you'll buy, and there's actually an animated deck in the trick. Um, right. But just regular usage, everyday ordinary, there's not many that are animated. There are a few, yeah. and some people might consider marked decks animated because they do move, but realistically, this is a full animation with moving components from card to card. Cool. Yeah, Quantum Angel, which is something Paul here has put out recently. That's a really awesome animation. You're able to reveal in real time a thought of word or like someone's name or something. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah that's a really good one. Um, yep. I did want to make mention of something that I think is pretty cool for all you guys kind of on the fence or whether or not this is for you. Uh, I do want to bring in something. The guys at Hocus Pocus have been really, really awesome. Uh, they just put a post over on our uh, YouTube channel saying, thank you to everyone for placing your orders. They are all being shipped uh, today, and we included a free gift to everyone. So there you go, guys. If you're thinking about where to go, these guys are amazing anyway. Uh, they are even more amazing now because they're going to hook you guys up with some, uh, some free stuff too. So there you go. Don't forget to check out our friends over at Hocus Pocus to uh, get your hands on this deck and any of the other magic stuff that you got your uh, got your eyes on. There's a there's a lot yeah. of good stuff out there, and, and they're definitely one of the good people. The the company is they're just good people. Um, 
out there. So definitely support them. And uh, I don't want to yeah. take credit away from Max, but from the year and a half we've been working together, they've taken their deck collection from about 200 available decks for sale to well over 600 at almost all times. Wow. So if you think there's a deck out there that you might like, you don't have to pay shipping from 10 different locations. Hocus Pocus probably has it in their one of 600. So have have fun looking through there. <laughs> You'll see how I fill my shelves quickly. <laughs> ah, the secret is out of the bag. Yes. <laughs> cool. Uh, what's up, Scott? Uh, good to see you over on our uh, Facebook page. So you just popped in. All right. And uh, thanks, Max, for popping in over on our Facebook page, too. Good to see you out there. Uh, again, guys, if you want to have a chance to win a free Shiner deck, I gave you the details before. Quickly, though, just tag a friend, post your comment, tag a friend, and like this post. Over the next week, I'll pick a winner, and uh, it's going to be awesome. And on YouTube, post a comment. Tell me why you should uh, win this deck, or more specifically, what you would do with it. And we'll pick a winner next week, too. I want to give you a little reminder. Today, we are joined by Ryan Jones. He is from Chicago in the Windy City. Uh, he is a card collector and enthusiast, and he's given his honest thoughts and uh, basically like a live review of the me mechanic metallic set, uh, limited edition set, because the Glimmer deck that comes in it, and I'll have Ryan hold that up for you, uh, the Glimmer deck from the set is actually limited to only 2,500 decks. Only 2,500 of these were made, and um, so the only way to get it, though, is to buy the set. So you can get the Shiner deck and this deck as well, the beautiful Glimmer deck, uh, as part of the set. Uh, so get your hands on those while you can. Um, and again, these Shiner decks are available separately, but if you're going to get one, why not just get both? So there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of this Glimmer deck because when companies put out a deck set like that, collectors, they, they get them, they snag them, and then the availability of them quickly decreases. So if you can get your hands on one of these early, you know, like, when you start seeing them floating around, where'd you get that? I can't find those anymore. And you're sitting there yeah. with two on your shelf, and you're like, ah, you know, <laughs> strike, struck while the iron's hot. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your buddy uh, Harshit says another, he had another question. He wants to know when the um, 56 sealed deck is going to happen. He wants to know which manufacturer stock and finish would you use? That's an interesting question, huh? Well, I can't say when it's coming out. I can say that I always have tons of ideas in the work, and just when, when the stars align, something's going to happen. Um, I've worked on three other um, Kickstarter campaigns, one more heavily than the other two. Uh, Max and uh, I and Edu did the Hocus Pocus 40th anniversary deck. I helped lay out the Kickstarter form for that, but... I will say we're going with USPCC if I got to print anything. All right. Sounds good. Okay. And I would love to ask one last question um, from my own because uh, I've been wondering this for the longest time. Um, the way that I equate this, what I'm about to ask you is, maybe I'm wrong, you know, like girls collect purses and they collect shoes and they have to match everything. Can you explain to me as someone that doesn't do this? What the appeal, what's the interest of deck collecting? Because there's so many out there. It just, to me, it seems so accessorized now that everyone has decks and they're posting pictures of the decks on their you know, social media stuff. Like, I might sound old here, but I don't get it. Can you try to bring me into that world and have me understand it a little bit better? So. Yes, because I kind of thought the same thing too, but there's a bug. And somewhere along the line of collecting decks, maybe around 50 or 60, you get bit and you tend to start focusing on something, some aspect. Mm -hmm. So when I first started collecting, I just wanted bicycle only. And then I wanted all my favorite designers. And then I wanted everything that came off of Kickstarter. So there's definitely subgenres of card collecting that are just, they're obtainable. So if you really like one designer and he has 12 decks, you can go out and spend the time hunting and finding and looking. You finally get that white whale, that one you've been looking for for months to complete your collection. There's a satisfaction from that. I think it's just um, some type of desire to have all of one thing. I don't think there's anyone out there that can buy one of every playing card ever printed. But if you sub it down to, say, bicycle, 
Uh, if you if you're willing to spend the time, you could probably buy one of every bicycle deck printed from 1990 on. If you want to uh, narrow it down to decks that have foil on them, you could probably go out and find all the foil decks. It's a challenge. It, it involves hunting and the most. The, I think a part that a lot of people give up or, or overlook is it's very social. In order for you to find out all the insights, you have to get on the horn, call people up on the phone, send emails out, send text messages, whatever it is, and you have to go out there and introduce and mingle and rub shoulders with people to get the decks you want that are out of print. So that to me is the most over looked aspect of card collecting is the other people involved and they're from every walk of life every walk of life and are there like conventions for you guys i'm calling you guys <laughs> for collectors are there like deck because i don't know about that if it exists is there such so a thing? there's one there's a couple really big ones but one of the major ones is 52 plus joker yeah. and they're one of the oldest card collecting um organizations and they're trying to incorporate another one the chicago swap card collectors um which is when you collect one single card not the whole deck so they're trying to and you know envelop uh, more collectors once a year they have a convention somewhere in the united states this year coming up it's going to be in erlinger kentucky and they're going to do a tour of the plant um and you get to meet people you get to meet designers um, old time collectors that have been collecting for 50, 60 years. You get to meet brand new people that don't even know what a, what a card, what a deck of cards is or all the details about it. Um, it's a little bit of everybody and a little bit of everything. I love it, dude. That's, that's amazing. I had no idea there was this whole like subculture of deck, <laughs> deck people out there. And it's filled with men and women from all ages and all classes and all over the world. I'm my buddy. Uh, Hogel is from India. Um, we met and we talk all the time about cards. So hmm. all right. you'd be surprised at, at how social card collecting could be. <laughs> it's not like stamp collecting, basically. It's better. <laughs> no, but maybe I'm passing judgment on stamp collecting because maybe they have really cool communities that we just don't know about yet. But yeah, right. it's out there. Card collecting is fun and it's challenging. Interesting, interesting stuff. It's a whole other world that I am just yeah. so naive about, but it's definitely out there. I mean, there's a reason why there's so many different custom decks out there these days. And that's one last question I have for you when it comes to this as the collector, uh, the expert when it comes to all that. What do, uh, I mean, what do you call it when people, uh, do you call yourself a collector? Do you call yourself an enthusiast? Do you call yourself like, I guess people in that, in that world, what do you what do you call each other or what do you call it that you do like it's i th i think most people just refer themselves as just collectors okay um but i would say that there are there's this there is one category of people that maybe they know this or not but they're referred to as mega collectors oh wow and that's usually people that um, have ex such extremely large collections. They donate to museums. Okay. Uh, they they buy in bricks. They buy in bulk, and they collect for the uh, you know kind of the preservation of the cards in the future. Hmm. Um, and then there's swap card collectors, like I mentioned earlier, that instead of they'll buy one deck, open it up, and sell each card for twenty five cents. Wow. So fifty two people can all have one card instead of everybody buying one deck. Um, so there, there are subcategories, but I think in general, kind of most people refer themselves as collectors okay. and then they quickly begin to use them. So they become magicians, they become amateur magicians, they yeah. become artists, they become gamblers. It's wow. if, if they're there, they'll start being used. <laughs> all right. Can't keep them all sealed. All right. That's cool. Just a lot of things I'm, like I said, I'm new to, and I'm sure you and I will have another chat again sometime soon where we can go even deeper into the world of, uh, card collecting yeah. uh you did mention a couple of the conventions um are there any of those coming up i know for us the magicians uh, <laughs> we have magic live yeah. coming up here uh this like month two weeks right um are you going to be there or unfortunately i'm not i was planning on it last year to go this year but with yeah. all the moving and everything that's yeah. been it's just not in the stars for me okay. but what about we'll be out there october 12th at the uh, Hocus or at the um, 52 plus Joker convention in Erlinger, Kentucky. That's August 12th through the 15th. Okay. 
Okay. And Max Gross and the team from Hocus, are they going to be coming to Magic Live? I'm assuming that's a yes. yes. I hope so. All right. All right. Cool. <laughs> I'm trying to get Max to go to the, the 52 plus, so as many conventions as we can get him out there, we're happy. There you go. All right. Uh, any last thoughts? You want to summarize the metan uh, metanic, me mechanic metallic deck set. That was harder to say than I thought. Any last summary of the deck decks that we got there? Because there are two of them. With yeah, let me give a stuff. quick rundown like I normally do. Uh, these decks were designed by somebody who is involved with animation and design. There's 2,500 of these printed, and that's it. No more. There's 10,000 of these printed as of now, depending on demand that may go up. That's still low run when you consider how many people's Murphy's is going to split this up among. Um, it's, it's part of a, a, a line, a lineage of V1, V2, and now this is V3, even though there's two decks with it. Um, guys, it's, it's a collector's dream to have a lineage that you can complete and can possibly be carried on, also having unique features like animation, heavy use of metallic foil on the tuck boxes, and metallic inks on the card back. Custom quartz colored with silver and gold, respectively, for the two decks. Um, that's a nice feature for the face cards, adds a touch of class, and really ties the whole deck together. And there's really everything else. It's playable, it's usable, the core cards are custom. If you don't show people the animation, they never know it could potentially be marked. And if you want to have fun and show people um, the deck actually working to find their card, here's your deck. Wow. All right. I think you might have done a review or two in your lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Well, um, I want to give you a chance as well because we're going to start to wrap this up. Um, if there are uh, places people can keep up with you, I know that you've been away. Uh, real life got in the way of you doing some of your reviews and being more uh, active online, but that's going to change. So when it does change, uh, how can people keep up with Ryan Jones and see what you're up to and uh, get their card collecting fix? Well, I can tell you this. Um, my only social media I stay on heavily is... Um, Instagram. Okay. I let Hocus Pocus do host all the videos on YouTube. Um, but my email is 56sealed at Gmail. You can always contact me. You could direct message me through Instagram. I don't deny any request. I answer every single question in time. There's nobody that's ever sent me a message that I haven't answered. I can promise that. Um, I, I expect people to answer my messages when I send them out. And in turn, I will always answer every message sent. If you want to talk cards, if you have a question, if you want to know what the, the uh, perceived price on a deck is, if you want to know about how to liquidate your collection, anything you could possibly think of, send me a message. If I don't know the answer, I'll try to put you in touch with someone who does. All right. All right. So, so 56sealed on Instagram, 56sealed at Gmail for email. All right, man. All right, man. Sounds, good. Sounds good. Ryan, Ryan I want to thank you, want to thank you for you. hanging with us for about the last hour, chatting all about this brand new deck uh, set. I keep missing it. I keep thinking it's just one single deck. Um, and thank you for your thoughts and your honesty. And I'm sure that we'll be coming together again sometime in the near future to do more and more deck reviews and talk you know, cards, because you are definitely the person that is uh, at the top of that list of people in your, uh, in your area of expertise, and we will definitely be relying on you more and more in the future, I am sure. Yeah, I'm more than happy to participate. Luke, thank you very much for the opportunity. This is huge. I'm glad all the people out there watching get to see my beautiful face and you know, <laughs> come follow me on Instagram and have fun along the way. All right, sounds good. Well, thank you to Ryan. And to the rest of you, thank you for hanging out with us today. Uh, again, don't forget to check out our feature dealer. That is the guys over at Hocus Pocus. I'll pull up their site once more. Uh, if you are wanting to grab the Mechanic Metallic set, this is the place to grab it. They are including uh, free gifts today. I don't know what that is, but they are including that today uh, if you are interested in that. Actually, here's a nice shot of Ryan once more. He's holding up both of the decks. Um, there is Ryan holding up both decks for you. So check those out. Sexy decks, love the animation, love the goodness. And again, the, the glimmers, you can see here the gold, basically, edition of these. Only 2,500 were printed. Uh, and the only way to get it is if you buy the set. The shiners are available uh, separately. But grab those now from hocus-pocus.com. Feature dealer. Uh, also, don't forget, you can have a chance to win a free shiner deck. Um, all you need to do is over on Facebook, like this post that you're watching, whether it's live or on demand, and tag a friend. Tag a friend in your comment. 
and uh, you are entered just by doing that. Um, Facebook friends, that's how you win. YouTube friends, a little bit different. Your comments you're posting right now, they're not saved, they go away, they vanish after this video. So all you need to do is to post a comment after this video goes up as an on-demand and the comments are saved, telling me what you would do with the Shiner deck. Again, that is the one that has the Shiner functionality to the talks. So you can actually secretly peek cards. Um, I'm gonna show this again. Oh, there's Ryan holding it up. Man, you're awesome, dude. Uh, there's Ryan holding it up. And again, you can get the nice peek functionality there from the actual tuck itself. Very, very cool stuff. So you guys both have a chance to win over on Facebook and on YouTube. Good luck to all of you. Thanks again, everybody, for joining us today and all the good questions and just hanging out. It's always fun to talk about magic or playing cards. You know, we're all doing this stuff. Uh, I think the, the playing cards that we have, I look at them as like tools that we have to work with to do magic with. And today we definitely talked to an expert in the field of playing cards or pasteboards, I think as the professional people call them, pasteboards. <laughs> All right, my friends, I will catch you guys on the flip side. We'll be back again next Wednesday at New Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, chatting with you more about magic stuff. You never know, we might have another guest, but we are here each and every Wednesday, so make sure on our Facebook page, Murphy's Magic Supplies, you are following us and turn their notifications to on. That way you get little pop-ups when we go live and over on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to us. Not only are we doing more live content, I'm also posting weekly videos now, giving you guys magic advice and tips. I posted one yesterday all about things that magicians should avoid. I want to thank everybody for the great feedback and response to that. I'm blown away by it. Can't wait to bring you the next video in that series. All right. So that is it for now. If you have any magic questions along the way, don't forget you can drop us a message over on our Facebook page, over on Twitter, Instagram, or on our YouTube videos. You can post comments, questions, and we'll be in there interacting with you too. All right. My name is Luke Dance. I hope to see some of you coming up here for Magic Live. It was coming up August 13th through 16th. Here in beautiful Las Vegas, if you are coming, get ready. It is hot. Be prepared. Just warning you now. All right? Cool. I will catch you guys next week. Same place, same time. But in the meantime, hope you had a blast. Have some fun. Do some practicing. Collect some cards. Whatever it is. Just remember, this stuff should be fun. And uh, you should have fun doing it along the way. And never forget about that. All right? Cool. I will catch you guys later. <laughs>